best car they built and indeed he says it could be the most exciting introduced to the Grand Prix scene so far. <laughs> So here is Hunt now, going out in his new wolf at Donington, but he was taking it slowly because there were some icy patches on the track and the previous day Hunt had spun and locked the wheels, finishing up in the sand. Just before that incident, though, he was only seconds off the Donington uh, track record, three seconds to be precise, and he was driving then on a full tank. In this testing session, Hunt had to handle the car very carefully because there was still some sand in the wheel bearings and he could only manage, in fact, two laps. Indeed, when the Grand Prix season opens in Argentina on Sunday week, the new Wolf car will still be virtually untested. Well, Mike Smith asked James Hunt afterwards how the Donington sessions had gone. Here's what he had to say. Feels very good. Um, in fact, we've done as many laps as we need to here, as, um, or as many as we can find useful anyway, because with the, the weather being as it is, we can only really check the car out mechanically and engineering-wise, and from the, in that respect, the car feels absolutely excellent. Um, we now have to go somewhere where, where it's warmer, and we can run the car at full speed and in anger, and then we'll see just how quick it is. Looking back over the past couple of years, since you won the World Championship on that memorable day in Japan in 1976, um, it's sort of seemed to slide downhill, the career. There have been peaks and troughs, and, and there seem to be more troughs than peaks. And one of the peaks was, was like 1978, leading the Spanish Grand Prix for six laps. But generally... <laughs> Big it, deal. <laughs> yeah, generally, it, it seems to have been sliding downhill, and I think in the, in the eyes of the onlooker, it's not been a happy time for James Hunt from the outside. What's it been like on your side of it? Well, it's never happy if you're not doing well. Of course, um, well, 77 was a better year than 76 in terms of, um, uh, of the way the car ran on the track and, and my speed and things. Just didn't, we weren't very lucky with finishes, that was all. I led more miles and, <coughs> and actually performed um, better relative to the others and had a more dominant season, but I didn't win, and that's the way it goes. 78, everything went wrong. And um, uh, apart from anything else, you know, it was, that was a depressing year. You can handle it going wrong if things are competitive and things, but it was depressing driving a, an uncompetitive car because all of a sudden the M26 wasn't uh, really uh, competitive with its rivals. And of course, it's no fun competing for, uh, you know, a minor placing. <coughs> when you're used to competing to win. But apart from that, you know, that is the nature of the business. It's happened to me before. I mean, I've been driving the, and racing over 10 years now. And, um, you know, racing has, as you say, uh, peaks and troughs. And uh, I just like to get out of the trough at the moment. <laughs> and the 1979 Grand Prix season gets underway on Sunday with the first race of the season in Argentina. Qualifying begins tomorrow and the teams will, not, will have to adjust not only to new cars and new drivers, but also to temperatures into the 90s. The close season, in fact, has brought its usual crop of changes. For most teams, it gives them a chance to whittle away at the superiority of Lotus. Some drivers have gone to new teams, notably James Hunt to Wolf and Carlos Reutemann to Lotus. But new car designs have been watched even more closely. Mike Smith reports. January 1978, Mario Andretti and his Lotus start as they mean to carry on and totally dominate the first Grand Prix of the year. Winning by over 13 seconds, Andretti establishes the pattern for the season. Of the 16 Grand Prix in 1978, half were won by Lotus. The drivers, Andretti and the late Ronnie Peterson, took the top two championship places and Colin Chapman's brilliant design team established a new cliche in racing, ground effect the art of creating low-pressure areas in the car's airstream, thereby sucking the vehicle onto the track. So advanced is the Lotus technology that this victory scene stands every chance of being repeated in 1979. Despite the introduction of several new cars, many people still believe that Lotus will be the car to beat, including James Hunt. All we do know is that Lotus are very, very good. Good year and Michelin have produced new towers. We don't know how well they will perform relative to each other. We don't know how well, nearly every team has a new car. We don't know how well they will perform relative to each other and relative to the Lotus, which is the sort of anchor point for everybody because it's a, a dominant car. And it's that dominant Lotus which seems to have spurred the design for Hunt's own 1979 car, the brand new Wolf WR7. From its Cosworth V8 engine right down to those ground effect side skirts, the new Wolf is undeniably Lotus-like. For James Hunt, it's a swan song season. After six years of Formula One, he's announced his intentions to retire at the end of 1979. 
Whether or not he takes a second world title to add to his 1976 crown depends largely upon the relationship he strikes up with his new team after three seasons with McLaren. The prospects aren't helped by the lack of testing. He spent just one full day with the new car and his disappointing form in 1978 has cast doubts on his attitude. But the new team, new car and new season may rekindle the fire. The Formula One drivers in general have become less important this winter. Teams have paid more attention to designers and drawing boards. But for all this, there is only one radically new car to start the season.